Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2013 NFL team preview. We're breaking down the Chicago Bears. We're going to take a look at their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Bears this upcoming season. In its simplest form, football is a you are what you are type of a business. And we know what Jay Cutler is right now entering his eighth season in the NFL. He's a guy that's extremely talented that can make every throw imaginable on a football field, but he's wildly inconsistent. And he tends to make bad reads throughout the course of games, which results in interceptions. The reason why he doesn't have a lot of interceptions as most quarterbacks do is the fact that his arm strength can get him out of trouble. So he can be late with the read at times, but a lot of times it does get him in the trouble. Now getting Mark Tressman as his head coach will help him out a lot. He's going to cater the offense around what Cutler does well. He can attack the seams very well with that strong arm and those tall wide receivers and Elshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall. He's going to work the running backs into the passing game as well, just like he did with Charlie Garner out there in Oakland. So Cutler's going to have a better year statistically, and hopefully that's enough to get the Bears where they want to be. Quiet is kept. Matt Forte is one of the more versatile and elusive backs in the league. You talk about a guy that's 6'2", 220 pounds. Once he gets into the open field, he has moves like Barry Sanders for his making guys miss. And he's also a valuable asset out of the backfield. In his five-year career, he has caught for over 260 passes. So you can get creative with Matt Forte in your offense. He can do different things in the running game, also do some great things in the passing game. And this is the real reason why over the course of his five seasons, he's been an integral part to the Bears offensive success now when you look at michael bush backing him up that's a capable number two giving the bears a potent one-two punch because bush is a guy that also has soft fans coming out of the backfield swing passes screen passes and he can't be used as your short yardage goal line runner behind those guys are mondo allen and undrafted rookie free agent michael ford out of lsu can compete for that third or fourth spot ford has a great chance to make the roster because he's more shifty than allen and can be a valuable asset as well in the passing game I'm a big fan of fullback Harvey Unger out of BYU, opening holes for both Forte and Michael Bush. And I also wouldn't hesitate to put him in a situation where he's a single back in short yardage and goal line as well because of his ability to run the football. He did a great job of that at BYU. The one thing I do know about Mark Trestman is the fact that he will spread that passing game out and force the defense to cover every blade of grass. And he has some outstanding weapons to work with here in Chicago. Brandon Marshall, by far, is one of the more athletic wide receivers in the game. Is probably the best run after catch wide receiver. Here's a guy that once he gets that football in his hands, he's looking to score. No one will stop him until he hits pay dirt. I think he's going to have a fine season under Trestman. You also look at Elshon Jeffrey, last year's rookie second round pick, a guy that I really like coming out of South Carolina excellent hands and you can move him around the formation he can be a split he can also be a flanker you can also even put him in the slot so i think he does give you versatility within your offense it does a great job of high pointing the football and is a red zone target same can be said for earl bennett who's a dependable guy that's mostly lined up in the slot but also can do damage on the outside i like what he brings to the table big fan of his game as well but keep an eye on rookie seventh round draft pick marcus wilson out of washington state keep an eye on this guy tall angular able to contort his body to make the difficult catch and has some great bursts off the line of scrimmage. So he's another threat that you can utilize as well on the interior. But the big free agent signing that's going to really make this offense go, in my opinion, is Martellus Bennett coming over from the New York Giants. Jay Keller has never had a tight end of this caliber in that offense. And when you look at what he brings to the table, he's athletic, he can block, he can line up out wide. So now when defenses face Chicago, they have to really cover every blade of grass because they can attack you in the passing game from many different areas out of the back backfield with Forte and Bush on the outside with Marshall and Elshon Jeffrey in the slot with Earl Bennett and now down the hash marks and sometimes on the outside with Martellus Bennett this is a very underrated receiving unit that has to match its potential with production and that's the biggest focus in 2013. Along the offensive line, there were a lot of changes in the offseason for the Chicago Bears, and they needed to do that to help keep Jay Cutler protected in the pocket. The mainstays are center Robert Garza, who's been a very productive player throughout the course of his 12-year career, and Jamarcus Webb, who struggled last year as a left tackle, now is moving to the right side where they hope 
he can have some success. They also bring in some new blood on that offense front. Jamon Bushrod coming over from the New Orleans Saints where he was a two-time Pro Bowler protecting the blind side of Drew Brees. Matt Slauson on the interior coming from the New York Jets. He's still a young player. He's only going to be 26, 27 years old and has a lot of good football left in him. And they drafted Kyle Long in the draft out of Oregon, a guy that can play both guard and tackle. I think he's slated to start on the inside at guard. Ebron Britton is another free agent coming over from the Jacksonville Jaguars who will move from tackle to guard, providing depth along the offensive line. And keep an eye on Jordan Mills, rookie tackle out of Louisiana Tech. They drafted him in the fifth round this year. I think he has a great chance of being a key contributor as a rookie for the Chicago Bears. Here's a guy that can play left tackle or right tackle, so he provides that depth and versatility and may even push Jamarcus Webb for that starting right tackle job. So you still have to take the wait-and-see approach for the Chicago Bears offensive front to see if they've done enough to protect Jay Cutler. Quite honestly, Cutler has to shoulder some of the blame last year for being sacked 44 times, which is 25th in the league. He holds the football entirely too long, got to make quicker decisions to help this offensive line out. But when we look at the pieces they brought in, you have to say the arrow is pointing in the right direction. Bears have a new defensive coordinator in Mel Tucker coming over from the Jacksonville Jaguars where he was defensive coordinator and he inherits a very talented defensive line. He's going to keep a lot of the same concepts that the Bears ran under Lovey Smith, that 4-3 cover 2 type scheme that preaches both pressure and rotation. So when you look at the defensive end position, they still have the Wally Vet entering his 11th season and that's Julius Peppers who had 11 and a half sacks last year. This is the guy that still can find his way to the quarterback. Opposite of him, Gonis Israel Adonaje, but they still have two very talented young players. Corey Wooten out of Northwestern, they brought in a couple of years ago, who's finally starting to realize his potential, had seven sacks last year. And Shea McClellan, whom they drafted in the first round last year out of Boise State, that had two and a half sacks. He definitely is going to have a better year. He's going to bring a lot of pressure off the edge. So they have a good three-man rotation going. And also keep an eye on rookie Cornelius Washington coming out of Georgia, played in the 3-4 defense where he was an outside linebacker as an edge rusher. He's going to put his hand in the dirt for the Bears and look to get that same type of production out of the 4-3. On the interior at the defensive tackle spot, I like what I see here as well. Henry Mel is a guy that made the Pro Bowl last year. Very athletic defensive tackle. Has to be more consistent throughout the course of 16 games. They also have Steven Paella, strong at the point of attack. May not be the biggest guy, but you won't move him off the spot. He provides that run stuffing capability. And they also look to bring in depth as well behind these guys. Cedric Ellis is looking to rejuvenate his career. Started off promising for the New Orleans Saints. Had a couple of down seasons and is hoping to get back to his pass rushing ways that made him one of the top draft prospects coming out of college. And keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Brent Russell out of Georgia Southern. A guy that dominated the FCS level and has a chance to make the roster as a pass rushing defensive tackle. Gone from the linebacking core is future Hall of Famer Brian Erlacher, who put in 13 productive seasons for the Chicago Bears. Replacing him won't be as big of a problem due to the fact that he was getting old. He understood that and he left at the right time. But bring in DJ Williams from the Denver Broncos, who's going to move to the middle linebacker position, a guy that does bring a lot of athleticism at that spot. They still have Lance Briggs, who's entering his 11th season out of Arizona. And Briggs is still one of the best weak side linebackers in the league. This is a guy that's always making plays around the football. And I don't think age is the problem with number 55. On the strong side, I think there's going to be a big battle between James Anderson coming over from the Carolina Panthers and a guy they drafted in the fourth round, Kasim Green out of Rutgers. I know some people think he's a weak side backer. I think he can play both weak side and strong side. You have a guy that was a former safety, so he has the cover skills to match up versus linebackers and some wide receivers. So I think that's a spot that Green could win as a rookie. And you also want to keep an eye on another rookie that could push for a lot of playing time either at the middle or the strong side back position. That's John Bosick out of Florida. Some say he's the most versatile linebacker to come out this year's draft. So I think the Bears, when you look at their linebacking core, you see where they're starting to make that youth movement transition. And Jerry Franklin is another guy that can provide some depth at both the middle linebacker position as well as weak side backer. So keep an eye on that. And it'll be interesting to see what these guys do as young players as they work themselves in the rotation, which could set the stage for a lot of changes in 2014. Charles Tillman had an all-pro season last year for the Chicago Bears en route to his second straight Pro Bowl appearance. This guy had 10 forced fumbles, three defensive touchdowns, and also three interceptions, so he was definitely getting it done throughout the course of the year. Opposite of him, you have to like what you see out of Tim Jennings, another guy that made the Pro Bowl, had his finest year as a pro. There's going to be a battle for the nickel spot. You got Calvin Hayden, Sherrick McManus. I think McManus is a guy that could win that spot. 
back at the safety position. Another question mark at the free safety spot. Chris Conte will battle Brandon Harden, whom they drafted last year that took the redshirt year coming off an injury, but he is that versatile player that can play corner in the pinch. He played corner in college, so that gives you the cover skills you want back there as a free safety. At the strong safety position, I think they're fine with Major Wright, a guy that's an enforcer over the middle, hitting wide receivers, effective in a run game, and they bring in depth with Tom Zipikowski, who also can be a spot starter if need be, and have a good special teamer in Craig Stelt. So I like the secondary of the Chicago Bears. There still is a question that has to be answered at the nickel and dime spot, but overall this is a fine unit that has a good mix of both youth and experience. The special teams unit for Chicago will once again be solid and a key catalyst to this team's success. You look at Robbie Gould returning back from injury, missed the last three games of last year because of a calf, and they have one of the best punters in the conference in Adam Podolesh, who does a great job of getting excellent hang time on his punts, thus not outkicking his coverage and only allowing such a limited amount of return yardage. And in the return game, there's a dangerous Devin Hester that had a subpar season last year, but he's a threat to score anytime he touches the football, no matter where he's at on the field. So I think he's going to have a bounce back 2013 season. Now let's take a look at what the Bears have on their roster. Good overall talent, top to bottom. You can't argue that. They also have a stud at every level on their defense. Julius Peppers, Lance Briggs, Charles Tillman. They're ready to compete at every level. And they have a new coach with a new approach. We talked about that before, how much Mark Trestman will mean to this offense. Now what the Bears lack, they don't have a game changer at free safety, a guy that really can eliminate mistakes. They have a pretty decent player back there in Chris Conte who's young, but not a game changer. They don't have a dominant offensive line. That won't fool anybody. And they don't have the depth at the tight end position and the cornerback position. I know I made a great case for how much I like their cornerback spot, but there's question marks at the nickel and dime positions. Reason for optimism for Chicago, you look at the last two seasons, they were on the brink of playoff appearances before injuries struck. Two years ago, it was Jay Cutler. Last year, it was Matt Forte missed the game versus Houston. And then following that, Jay Cutler missed the game versus San Francisco, both of which they lost. They ended up missing the playoffs last season by one game. So you figure this is a team that can compete, that can win the division, and is not that far off. Now, the cause for concern would be if that offensive line doesn't gel, doesn't do anything different than they did last season, and Jay Cutler ends up on his back like he did in 2012 and you also have to wonder about the loss of Brian Erlach I know they played games without him before and they've won games with him on the sideline but what about him not being on the team at all that's something you want to keep an eye on moving forward The road to the Super Bowl for the Bears goes as follows. Number one, the offensive line has to show improvement over last season. That goes without say. Two, the defense has to have great balance between the rookies and the vets. They're going to need some rookie guys to step up and be key contributors on that defense. And third, Jay Cutler and Matt Forte have to remain intact for the full season. Bears were snake bitten the last two seasons with both guys missing time at key spots in the season. That can't happen this year if they want to get to East Rutherford. I like the Bears to finish first in the NFC North. I look at this team the last couple of seasons and they were ready to make a run. Now you bring in Mark Trestman, an offensive mind, a guy that has a winning pedigree, won in Oakland. He won a great cup championship for the Montreal Alouettes and he can do the same for Chicago. It's all about consistency, improving the offensive line. They've done that by bringing in new pieces and adding Aaron Croman, the offensive line coach from the New Orleans Saints. And they also bring over Mel Tucker, a great defensive coach from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I think the Bears still have enough on this roster to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Packers, the Lions, and the Vikings and ultimately come out on top as NFC North champions. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Bears Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.